If you need to get access to Juniper equipment to get smarter with Junos or JWeb or testing protocols and things like that, the Juniper VLab environment is a really sweet thing that Juniper has to offer. I'm going to put in the, the pop-out cards or the comments below an introduction video that I did explaining how to get access to Juniper VLabs. But this video is going to take us even further into understanding how to get straight IP access into the Juniper VLab environment so that you can use your own tools and uh, programs on your local computer. Uh, wherever you're accessing Juniper, Juniper VLabs from. Maybe that's your desktop at your home or your office. And so I'm going to show you how to enable access using your IP address from where you're coming from so that you can use your own web browsers for accessing JWeb or your own SSH client. All right, so here we go. So while you're in Juniper VLabs, to access the device, uh, in this case of VSRX, you click this drop down and you can click SSH and it opens up a web based SSH. So you can look at routes, show interface terse, you can look at your interfaces, there's your gigabit Ethernet ports. But this is not a true console, and so it might be frustrating. For instance, when you're uh, going back, if you're using a hotkey like Control W, watch what happens. It closes your window. Ah, very frustrating. If you want to use actual PuTTY or uh, you know a command line based SSH, or even if you want to access JWeb, uh, the graphical user interface of a Juniper device, you're going to need to put your IP address that you're coming from from your house, from your office, wherever you are. You're going to have to put it into an access list in VLabs, and I'm going to show you how to do that. The instructions for doing this is right here in, I think it's Help. Drop down, click Help. It opens up the Juniper VLabs user guide. Control F for search. You can see that I previously had searched for J-Web accessing a device via HTTPS. So in order to enable straight web access into the Juniper VLab, you need to do this. This is the instructions right here. It says um, in the VLabs user interface, click on commands in the toolbar. What they're talking about is right here. Click on commands, okay? After clicking on commands, you're going to see this pop up over here on the side. You're going to click on add allowed network prefixes. And you'll have a little pop-up window where you type in your IP address. To find your IP address, simply go to Google, type in what is my IP address, and there you have it. It'll tell you what your IP address is. Obviously, I've, I've changed what my IP address is to something uh, just, you know, some, some fake IP address I just made up real quick just to prove my point. And to use this as an example of what you need to do in VLabs to get straight IP access into VLabs from your computer. Okay, now in VLabs, just like the instructions told us, click Commands, this pop-out window appears, click this arrow, and then this appears. Then you put in the IP address of where you are coming from. Once you do that, click Run, and then you will have straight IP access into the VLab environment where you can then use your own desktop IP tools for SSH, your own web browser for JWeb. You can also use, uh, you can access the REST API and the NetConf service on VSRX as well if you want to explore network programmability for automation uh, exercises that you might be also learning about or testing. You get this message here running, started seven seconds ago, and eventually it says completed, add allowed network prefixes ended with status completed, and you should be good to go now to access 
the environment from your desktop. Okay, I want to draw your attention to a couple things. If you click output, this output window will pop up. If it has completed, it's, there's going to be a few lines below this. You're going to need to, need to roll up on the screen uh, and look at this information here in the middle. You will see the public IP for out-of-band access. This is the public IP that you're using from your desktop um, on your computer at your house or office where you're running your web browser for JWeb or you're actually running your own putty. This is the IP that you use to connect to the VSRX, okay? They even show you that there's a port forwarding deal going on where using that IP address that I just mentioned, using that IP address and using these port numbers, and it'll tell you in this window what they are, they translate to this internal VSRX IP address and these internal well-known port numbers. You'll recognize some of these. If you don't, then uh, you're going to be learning that 443 is SSL. It's, it's otherwise known as HTTPS or Secure HTTP. 830, uh, I believe, is NetConf. 3000, I think, is the REST API. And 22 is SSH, Secure Shell. So this is pretty cool that they show you this. Now, also, you're going to get an email that has this exact information in it also. So these are two places to find out how you uh, fire up these sessions to access these services in your VSRX. To put those IP addresses in perspective and make sense of them, when I referenced 111.222.111.222 as my address, that's me. That's where uh, I'm accessing the Juniper environment from. So this would be my computer on my broadband internet connection or wherever you are, okay? This is your public IP. So however you get a public IP through NAT or CGNAT or whatever, this is your public IP. You go across the internet. The references that I've used in explaining all of this for 1.2.3.4 is some kind of external IP that Juniper has uh, in front of their, their VLABs. And it's, I'm guessing it's some kind of firewall or something right there. Uh, but regardless, this is the public IP that you use to access these services in that VLAB cloud. The 100.123.12.0 reference is the internal VSRX IP address. Here's how you start up SSH. Uh, if you're doing it from the command line, you'll type SSH, the username at the IP address, dash P, is where you can change the default port that SSH uses, which is 22. And you'll recall in that previous uh, e explanation that there are ports that you use on the outside that get forwarded to the internal well-known ports. So this is how you do that. By the way, the username and the password to log in using SSH or JWeb is sent to you in an email also when you successfully start up your Juniper VLAB. All right, it's not USER, user, it's something else. But just look in the email for that, those login credentials. Here's how you do it in PuTTY. Put the IP address there, put the port number there, and click Open. All right, so on my Windows 10 computer at my house, I am now able to open up the uh, SSH client built in to my operating system. And this is wonderful. Now when I hit Control-W, it doesn't close the window like it did on that web-based SSH that's built into VLabs. I mean, it's convenient if you just want quick access to use the, uh, the one here on the drop-down menu. But, you know, if you're more serious and you're going to want more sessions opened up uh, or you're going to want to, you're doing some heavy use and you want to use your hotkeys on the, on the CLI, then you're going to want to do uh, this uh, giving yourself access so you can use your own SSH client. Okay, then you open up your web browser to that public IP using that port number that corresponds to 443 or HTTPS, and you come to this window. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, you would click Advanced. Then after clicking Advanced on your 
web browser, you come to a page that looks like this and click this link right here that says proceed to the IP address. Beautiful. Now we have access to JWeb, the graphical user interface to control and configure and monitor the VSRX in the Juniper VLAB. Also really cool, we can access the REST API Explorer. And uh, one thing I want to mention is when you type in the IP address and the port number up here, it's HTTP. It is not HTTPS. Hey, that's it. That's how you get IP access into the Juniper VLAB environment. So you can run your own IP tools um, on your desktop. I hope you're liking what you're getting from this channel. Go ahead and subscribe uh, if you want to, if you're liking what you're getting. Uh, drop me a comment, especially regarding VLABs. I'm curious how much access and use uh, you guys are getting out of the VLAB environment. Um, and uh, share this with somebody that you think could benefit from it also. And I look forward to the next one.